Oh, no. oh boy. Serenity be quiet. <laughs> Serenity. Serenity. She didn't hear you. Say it again. Serenity. <laughs> she said hi. How are you? I'm good. Okay, that's good. Hi, mm -hmm. Archie. Say hello to Archie. Oh, hey, Archie. Hello, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Good. And she said she went back the day. She said it wasn't that bad. How did she know it was fake? She said when she went to the store to get a money order, and the guy told her it wasn't real. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't give it. So she went back up there. The girl said, well, I don't know, because you left out of here, so I don't know. <laughs> you could have got it from somewhere. She was just trying to cover her. Exactly. Hmm. Monty, 80 years old. What she know about? Right. Right. <laughs> Is we still on Daniel? Yes, we are. The last one. Yep. No, we are on chat. We're on chapter eleven. Eleven. Okay. Yeah, we got. It. You finished it up in in service. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. What's next, Pastor? Do we get another break? No. Um <laughs> I uh I distributed the uh syllabus starts oh. uh in February. So you'll see a printout of it. Uh you can pick it up on on Sunday. Okay. Yep. Hey, Sheila. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you? <laughs> good yourself. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Commissioner LaRue. Oh, good evening, Pastor. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I am fine, thanks. How's everyone doing? Good, good. Hey, your pastor's going to be here um, in, a, in a couple weeks. He's doing the uh, installation for a church up the street from us. Who is that? Um, you know, the guy at the church that did uh, you always go to when you go see the room. No. Oh, I don't. you talking about Wheeler? Yeah. No, she lives in Beaumont. Wheeler's in Houston. Oh, I thought I thought that was uh, your sister's uh, pastor. No. Oh, so where is who? What church is it going to be in? Greater Christ. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. It, as a matter of fact, I think it's the uh, it, 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 it's the day it's the Sunday after his uh, banquet. So that's that's March, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay, March. Um, yeah. Nineteenth. Right. Okay. So they they're installing a new pastor on that weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. He's uh he is uh that pastor's son-in-law. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he married uh, that pastor's daughter. I know. That is again. Uh, he married. He married the the the, the, the pastor elect. Pastor Wheeler. Married the the pastor elect here married the pastor at Wheeler's daughter. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I think that's. I remember watching that wedding on YouTube. Yeah. Yep. That's what it gets interesting. Yeah, Reverend Dr. Cosby. Right, right. He married Cosby's daughter. Okay. Like, yeah. And so I guess he's doing the uh, installation. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. Those tickets are pricey, ain't they? Woo, Lord. Yes, yeah, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> figure that one out. It's a white so I might make yeah, we keep every time I go down, we don't ever have time to go to Houston to go to the, go to the service. So we got to next time I go down to Texas, we got to take the time to go to Wheeler. Yeah. Is there any connection to Gideon? Now, how far is that from um, 
from Beaumont? From Houston. No, the Wheeler's in Houston. Oh, good. Because I LaRue, LaRue lives in Beaumont, and Beaumont okay. is about 90 miles from Houston. I have a conference to go to that's in Houston. Okay. So I may swing by there just to see how it looks. Yeah. I don't I don't think it's a full week, so I won't be able yeah, to they go. Have a, they have a new well, it's not new now. It's over a year old, though. They moved okay. into a brand new facility. Wow. During during the pandemic. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now I have a cousin who's a deacon at the at that church. Oh wow. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Find out if it's going to him. Hey Reverend Morton. Hello. How are you? Good yourself. Is that Deacon Phoenix 23? Deacon Phoenix, is that you? You got uh, it? Yeah. It, it is me. It is me, Pastor. Yes. There it is. Okay. All right. Okay. Looks like it's uh, 6.32. Uh, we have a um, majority of our participants uh, logged in with us. We have two more chapters. Daniel chapter 11 and Daniel chapter 12. And then uh, we will uh, we will be going a, a whole different route uh, the next, uh, the, the, the next uh, uh, I don't know if it's next semester, uh, but I, I distributed the syllabus via uh, the calendar invite, but there will also be printouts here in the office for you to pick up. So when you come on Sunday, uh, you'll be able to pick up the syllabus uh, for the next, I believe, eight weeks. I distributed uh, a syllabus starting February and going all, all the way up uh, to the week of Easter. And we're going to be centering primarily in Matthew, but there are some instances where we're going to uh, deviate to uh, John, I believe. And then there's some background uh, scriptures. You're going to see it and, and uh the, the uh, scriptures that are underlined in bold are the ones that we are going to uh, study, but there's additional scriptures that's go just going to be background support uh, for you uh, to utilize in your studies. So that's the uh, direction that we are going to go. So glad to see all of you connected with us on today. Uh, we have two more chapters. Uh, Reverend Moore, how's the uh, Tuesday class coming? It's coming along okay. Um, Tuesday was yesterday was our first time back uh, after the break, and we finished chapter seven. Well, we're finishing chapter seven. Oh, nice. Next okay. week we'll be on chapter eight. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 All right. All right. Looks like we'll be in the uh, sanctuary on Sunday. Um, I came up here. I want to say Monday evening. And it was a piping 71 degrees in there. Yeah, I've been in there since, but uh, but that that's good news. So we're uh, going to have some people come in, uh, do some cleanup. We're going to uh, volunteer, do some cleanup work in there, get uh, all the uh, uh, equipment and stuff back up and running. And so we should be good to go for Sunday in the sanctuary. Looking forward to that. All right. So let's open up with a word of prayer. And then I will read this lengthy passage of scripture. And then we will get into our discussion. Please join with me in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we are grateful for this opportunity that you've provided for us to come together to learn more about our responsibilities to you, to ourselves, and to the world. We pray, Lord, that the dialogue that we have, the discussions and the inspiration, as well as reflection, uh, be pleasing uh, not only to you, uh, but encouraging to those that are connected with us on today and those who may connect at a later time. Thank you, Lord, for all things we pray. In Christ's name, we ask it all. Amen and amen. All right, we are on chapter chapter 11 of the book of Daniel. I'll read it nice and loud. It's a rather lengthy text. Um, hopefully, all of you have had the chance to read and or study it. So I look forward to a lively discussion. Daniel chapter 11 from the New International Version. And in the first year of Darius the Mede, I took my stand to support and protect him. Now then, I tell you the truth. Three more kings will appear in Persia, and then a fourth who will be far richer than all the others. 
when he has gained power by his wealth, he will stir up everyone against the kingdom of Greece. And the mighty king will appear, will rule with great power and do as he pleases. After he has appeared, his empire will be broken up and parceled out toward the four winds of heaven. It will not go to his descendants, nor will it have the power he exercised because his empire will be uprooted and given to others. Verse five of chapter 11, the king of the south will become strong, but one of his commanders will become even stronger than he and will rule his own kingdom with great power. After some years, they will become allies. The daughter of the king of the south will go to the king of the north to make an alliance, but she will not retain her power and he and his power will not last. Those days, she will be handed over together with her royal escort and her father and the one who supported her. One from her own family line will arise to take her place. He will attack the forces of the king of the north and enter his fortress. He will fight against them and be victorious. He will also seize their gods, their metal images, and their valuable articles of silver and gold and carry them off to Egypt. For some years, he will leave the king of the north alone, verse nine of chapter 11. Then the king of the north will invade the realm of the king of the south, but will retreat to his own country. His sons will prepare for war and assemble a great army, which will sweep on like an irresistible flood and carry the battle as far as his fortress. Then the king of the south will march out in a rage and fight against the king of the north, who will raise a great army, but it will be defeated. When the army is carried off, the king of the south will be filled with pride and will slaughter many thousands, yet he will not remain triumphant. But the king of the north will muster another army larger than the first, and after several years, he will advance with a huge army fully equipped. In those days, many will rise against the king of the south. The violent men among your own people will rebel in fulfillment of the vision, but without success. Then the king of the north will come and build up siege ramps and will capture a fortified city. The forces of the south will be powerless to resist. Even their best troops will not have the strength to stand. The invader will do as he pleases. No one will be able to stand against him. He will establish himself in the beautiful land and will have the power to destroy it. Chapter 11, verse 17. He will then determine to come with the might of his entire kingdom and will make an alliance with the king of the south. And he will give him a daughter in marriage in order to overthrow the kingdom. But his plans will not succeed or help him. Then he will turn his attention to the coastlands and will take many of them, but a commander will put an end to his insolence. It will turn his insolence back upon him. After this, he will turn back toward the fortresses of his own country, but will stumble and fall to be seen no more. His successor, will send out a tax collector to maintain the royal splendor. In a few days, however, he will be destroyed, yet not in anger or in battle. He will be succeeded by a contemptible person who has not yet given the honor of royalty. He will invade the kingdom when its people feel secure. He will seize it through intrigue then an overwhelming army will be swept away before him. Both it and a prince of the covenant will be destroyed. After coming to an agreement with him, he will act deceitfully. And with only a few people, he will rise to power. When the richest provinces feel secure, he will invade them and will achieve what neither his fathers nor his forefathers did. He will distribute plunder, loot, and wealth among his followers. He will plot the overthrow of fortresses, but only for a time. With a large army, he will stir up 
his strength and courage against the king of the south. The king of the south will wage war with a large and a very powerful army, but he will not be able to stand because of the plots devised against him. Those who eat from the king's provision will try to destroy him. His army will be swept away and many will fall in battle. Two kings with their hearts bent on evil will sit at the same table and lie to each other, but to no avail because an end will still come at the appointed time. The king of the north will return to his own country with great wealth, but his heart will be set against the holy covenant. He will take action against it and then return to his own country. Daniel chapter 11, verse 29. At the appointed time, he will invade the south again, but this time the outcome will be different from what it was before. Ships of the western coastlands will oppose him and he will lose heart. Then he will turn back and vent his fury against the holy covenant. He will return and show favor to those who forsake the holy covenant. His armed forces will rise up and desecrate the temple fortresses and will abolish the daily sacrifice. Then they will set up the abomination that causes desolation with flattery. He will corrupt those who have violated the covenant, but the people who know their God will firmly resist him. Daniel chapter 11, verse 33. Those who are wise will instruct many, though for a time they will fall by the sword or be burned or captured or plundered. When they fall, they will receive a little help and many who are not sincere will join them. Some of the wise will stumble so that they may be refined, purified, and made spotless until the time of the end for it will still come at the appointed time. Verse 36, the king will do as he pleases. He will exalt and magnify himself above every God and will say unheard of things against the God of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what has been determined must take place. He will show no regard for the gods of his fathers, or for the one desired by women, nor will he regard any God, but will exalt himself above them all. Instead of them, he will honor a God of fortresses, a God unknown to his fathers. He will honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and costly gifts. He will attack the mightiest fortresses with the help of a foreign God and will greatly honor those who acknowledge him. He will make them rulers over many people and will distribute the land at a price. At the time of the end of the king of the south will engage him to battle. And the king of the north will storm out against him with chariots and cavalry and a great fleet of ships. He will invade many countries and sweep through them like a flood. He will also invade the beautiful land. Many countries will fall, but Edom, Moab, and the descent and the leaders of Ammon will be delivered from his hand. He will extend his power over many countries. Egypt will not escape. He will gain control of the treasures of gold and silver and all the riches of Egypt with the, the Libyans and Nubians in submission. But reports from the east of the north will alarm him. And he will set out in a great rage to destroy and annihilate many. He will pitch his royal tents between the seas at the beautiful holy mountain. Yet he will come to his end and no one will help him. The word of God for the people of God to the glory of God. W O W. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot going on in there. What are some things that uh, came to mind as you read some of the, as you heard, or even as you studied this? What are some instances? What are some real life situations? What are some other passages of scripture that run parallel 
to this that came to mind? What are just some impacts or, or tension or struggles you had uh, with this rather lengthy text uh, that we can discuss? First, you know, before we even get to that, what are some main narratives, some main high characters in this past? Well, we have the King of the North, we have the King of the South, we have nations uh, that are mentioned. Uh, we have uh, daughters of these uh, uh, leaders. And we also have the presence of the Almighty. There are also mentions of other uh, lowercase gods in this text. Uh, the thematic expression that weaves throughout this chapter uh, is the fact that even the powerful fall, uh, but we see in this text the various instances on how they fall. Some of them implode, but a good majority of them uh, fall as a result of uh, inward fighting, whether it's family members or commanders or colleagues. They start sniffing themselves and thinking that they can be more powerful uh, than the leader. What are some things, uh, other things you saw in this text uh, that you wrestled with? Uh, Deacon RT. Uh, to me, these kings, they break, they broke up in order to make up, then they made up to break up. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of confusing here to me. <laughs> And, 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 and uh, you know what, Deacon RT, there's one one uh, uh, verse in here that I, I thought of you because I just said to myself, I know he cracking up laughing reading this, where two kings sat across a table from each other and they were lying to each other. <laughs> I mean, it says that it, it, parenthetically in the text. And I just said, wow, that, that, that sounds like Congress. I mean, that sounds like individuals who know the other person is lying. And instead of them correcting, they ignore what they're saying and they are end up uh, telling falsehoods. Yeah, reminds me of Congress, reminds me of the White House. An unfortunate reality. Anything else, any, any other instances or specifics uh, that you'd like uh, for us to uh, highlight or push? Uh, it, go, uh, it goes to show also what country or uh, what nations would do to form alliances. Wow. Uh, there is a thing about the, the daughters yeah. that were wed in yeah. order to form the alliance between the nations. Yeah. So again, it goes and it goes to show again, you know, how far people will go in order to form alliances against a, a, a common enemy, so to speak. Now, oh, excellent point. And, and, and what you what you stated, uh, Deacon Finnis, kind of reminded me of, of this point. And, and maybe I, I, I might be totally off. I'm open for, for correction. But it seems like to me, when you see uh, nations like this in, in biblical times, as well as today, you find them doing one or two things. Either there's, they're expounding so much energy to prove to believers that they can survive without God. They can be successful. They can accumulate wealth without God, or they create a straw man that runs counter to the tenets of what, what, what and who God is. And that's just creating an idol God and pouring all of their allegiance to them to, to, in some respect, uh, thumb in the face of believers that your God is not the right one. That, to me, that, that is the undercurrent of really what's going on. Because look at it. You, you look at Congress today, and they have created a straw man and and filled this straw man saying this is what christianity is about and our government is founded upon the tenets of christianity yet their straw man has has no dealings with with those that are on the the, the corners of life on on the margins of life their god is a god that says the more wealth you accumulate by any means necessary reflects 
that God is in you. And that is the, the unfortunate reality that exists not only then in this text, but the realities that are present today. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Deacon RT. I, I, I was uh, checking it for, uh, for another reason. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, they use daughters that in, in here. They use daughters. Those are the, the females. Now, I'm thinking at this time, women were not involved in decision making in, 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 this, in this case. Right. But they use this daughter, and she was used, in my opinion, for a purpose, for a special reason. Now, is anyone else thinking about that, or what do you think that reason why they use her, these women? Anyone? I'm see, like Brother Finn, I'm see you in my vein. <laughs> <laughs> well, great question, a uh, class. What what do you think the function of these daughters of leaders as they facilitated relationships what were what was ultimately what was the undercurrent for their utilization deacon phoenix again it goes back to forming these alliances uh in fact if i have if, if i am country a and you are country b and i have a daughter my daughter who weds country B, now we have an, an alliance together. We have now two countries based upon this marriage of my daughter with country B. So now we have two countries that have formed an alliance because of marriage uh, by my daughter, you know. And so again, the alliances form uh, uh, a uh, two countries coming together to form a power that they did not have before the alliance was made. The daughter and the marriage formed an alliance that made the two countries much stronger. Okay, let me, uh, allow me uh, Deacon uh, uh, Phoenix and Deacon uh, Williams to, to read the uh, passage, one of the passages that Deacon uh, R.T. Williams is referring to. Now I'm gonna read it from uh, Eugene Peterson's uh, The Message Translation, and that comes from uh, Daniel chapter 11, beginning at verse number five. It says, next, the king of the south will grow strong, but one of his princes will grow stronger than he and rule an even larger territory. After a few years, the two of them will make a pact, and the daughter of the king of the south will marry the king of the north to cement the peace agreement. But her influence will weaken and her child will not survive. She and her servants, her child, and her husband will be betrayed. Does that change your answer or does that solidify your answer, Deacon Phoenix? It... You gotta unmute yourself, Deacon Phoenix. It, do, it does put some, it, I'm sorry, it does, am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah, it does kind of put some tension in what I said before, <laughs> because now the alliance is not strong, as I mentioned before, from what you just said, the, the, uh, the other nation, the leader of that nation, according to what you just read, becomes weaker by the alliance as opposed to becoming stronger. Yeah. And so again, that, that puts tension in what I just said. Yeah, it almost seems to the point, and, and, and help me if I'm using the right term, Deacon Williams, it almost seems like the daughter is being used as a pawn or as a distraction for more evil, corrupt motives because her value is not seen, uh, you know, her value is seen in the, in, in the, in the first inning but as the relationship is built, then her value is not seen at all. And not only is she gotten rid of, but as the text says, her offspring and her husband is gotten rid of. Dick, Dick brings up, uh, yeah, hit, hit me some, talk to me a little bit more about that. And then we'll have well, uh, Williams. Uh, I, 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 as I both said, she was used for a special reason. And nine times out of 10, by this woman, uh, the man, that man, weakest point is, is this lady. 
it's her it's man's weakest point so they use her in order to get the information that they needed so that's what she was that's that's that was her play in my I opinion want, i didn't want to say that deep but man you you hit it out the park you are absolutely correct she was used as a ploy to play upon the emotions of the opposite of of the of the opposite uh person on the agreement and once once that king was weakened then she had no more value to the agreement wow Let's but pastor could we could we uh, push this a little bit and say for example even though the king uh who was allied allied with the stronger person was weakened and the and the, and the, the daughter had no influence his power still was strengthened because now he had the assets of the person who whose country or nation he allied himself with wow so again even if uh you know the the, uh, the two of them did not come together become stronger he became stronger after playing as rt says and you says after playing the the other nation for for uh, being uh you can almost say being a sucker now his uh territory and his wealth has increased his power has increased wow Is yeah it, it, i can't disagree with you i i i agree with you 100 percent, 100 percent, sister evelyn well when i first started reading this uh chapter 11 i was a little confused because it was so long i <laughs> thought maybe these the north and the south i kept getting confused the north and the south i think they were just playing the game with each other and while one was pretending to be giving all this gold and silver blonde whatever they was going the other one was building up their am their army to attack the other one they was getting ready to for attack that's what i thought about you know it was just a game until they got serious yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I can see how you could could uh, derive at that. Yeah, uh, but but I okay. So 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 let's broaden the scope a little bit. And Sandy, this is what I need. This is what I need your your input. Let's broaden a little bit. Now we know that this is more than just a historical account. Even though the nations are named, there are realities to these nations. Yet, if we broaden this a little bit, there is a prophetic, apocalyptic undercurrent going on here as well. We likely skirted around with this in the book of Revelation when it talked about, you know, the, the battles that existed, not against good and evil, but you also have to recognize there is a battle against uh, evil and evil to the point where the, the strongest enemy wanted to make sure that his army was secure with followers. More importantly, followers who were teetering on not being solid in their allegiance. There's going to be an ultimate fight and war going on to solidify that army, to make sure that we gather as many people as possible to go against the church, the tenets of God, and to not uh, follow or not be uh, 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 evangelized, if I could use that word, uh, uh, at, at that last moment. What are your thoughts on that, uh, Sandy, or anyone else that saw that undercurrent going on in this text? I guess Sandy didn't see that. <laughs> anyone else? Did anyone else see that? Yes. Oh, <laughs> you didn't see that, Sandy? You didn't, you didn't pick that up? Yes or no? <laughs> well, well, when I'm looking at the the battles, because um, I keep going back and forth to like Revelations, because you have to go, when you're reading Daniel, you have to go look at Revelations too, to kind of understand some of the things that it's saying right. and then vice versa. So what came to mind to me with these uh, kingdoms that's, that's at war, 
um, in Revelations when they talk about the four empires and how um, there's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, there was like this one ruler who was like the least of them who came up and how he destroyed three of them before he was able to conquer. It just kind of reminds me of that. Like, okay, you got to, you're in alliance with one, but once you start it, once you get strong enough, then you're going to take over them. And then that's how you build yourself up. That's, I mean, this has kind of made me think of that. When I thought about these two together, everybody kind of said it like they're sitting there playing each other. Right. You know, they they both are playing each other. No one actually has a truth, but you know, one is actually going to conquer the other. Yeah. Ultimately, whoever yeah. gets ahead is is going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Regardless. And 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 so what does that say to us today in 2023? Well, you know, the low-hanging fruit is we've got to be rooted and grounded in our faith so that we will not fall victim to every wind of doctrine or anything that causes our ears to itch where we point the finger and say, wow, that 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 might be the Christ. We also have to be cautious and aware and so strong in the word where we can we can not be uh, uh, tempted by an artificial voice. Jesus said, it, uh, it, you know, my sheep know my voice. We've got to know the voice of God so that we will not fall victim to these uh, uh, um, ant ant antithetical voices that are rising up not only today, uh, but even in this text. Because we're not talking, see, the, the thing that we have to realize is these kings, when they fight each other, they're not fighting mano e mano. These are nations fighting against each other. So these corrupt kings have nations that are supporting them. And like I said, in the, in, in the infancy stages of this, this dialogue, these entire nations, regardless of who wins, they're all headed for destruction. So nations are filled, of, filled with who? People. We have to, as believers in Christ, be strong in our faith. Because as these nations who are the majority, during this time, the church is the minority. And many left the church because they said to themselves, it doesn't look like the church will ever get the upper hand. And when I say church through the context and lens of Daniel, I'm primarily speaking of believers. I'm not talking about an institutional church. But I'm talking about believers, those who who adhere to uh, the, the Hebraic God that, you know, Moses and Abraham and all of those uh, held uh, allegiance to. That same thing will happen. Nations will follow corrupt leaders, not just, you know, a segment of people, entire nations. And the remnant that's left, that church, their faith will be tested and tried. What will sustain the church? What will sustain believers? Because th this, this chapter also talks about how these leaders were so corrupt, they'd go in the church mm -hmm. and put up idol, uh, 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 sac uh, idol, a uh, build idol statues. Th these leaders were so corrupt that they not only disrespected the Hebrew God, the God of Isaac, uh, Jacob, and, 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 and Esau, and, 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 and others, but he also disrespected other idol gods and then constructed his own God. Deacon uh, Phoenix, you are muted. Yeah, because I think that we have modern day examples of what you just said. Yeah. You know, we, we have we had three countries that were democratic, but along came Stalin in Russia. Yeah. Along came Mussolini in yeah. Italy. 
mm-hmm. and Hitler and Germany. And they all turn those democratic countries into fascist, anti-Christian countries. And so, like you said, one person, and it almost happened this year with with our country. Yeah. You know, it, 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 you know, our, our our democracy is so fragile that again, it's, it's, there's great truth in what you said about that one person turn. And uh, and so many people following that one person, and in our instance, that lie that was told over and over and over again. Yeah. If uh, all you gotta do, if, if you could, a lie on Monday, if you say it a thousand times, the following days on Friday, you're gonna be like, wait a minute, there might be some to that. There might be some truth. That's exactly what happened uh, in our nation. Uh, Deacon R.T. Williams and then Brother Charles. Yes, uh, I think what's going on, I think I'm kind of, kind of related to what's going on today. Uh, at one point in time, uh, the Soviet Union was controlled by Russia. Yeah. And now today, Putin, he wants to regain it. But I, I'm, I'm thinking he he might be a bit off a little more than he can chew. But I think it was, he didn't think it was going to last this long, but uh, there's a higher power over him. So that's what I'm thinking. He, I'm, I'm thinking that would relate to today's what's going on today. Let me let me push you a little bit before we go to Charles uh, Deacon RT. What, what you're saying is spot on, and and to tie in what Phoenix just shared, I am amazed at how countries say, you know what. I think we were better off in the past. Let's let's bring back what we did in the past because it looked like it worked. Well, when you hear, you know, six, eight years ago, let's make America great again. Well, what that means is let's go back to the past. So, so Deacon RT, when you when you brought up uh the, the USSR and, and how you know you have Putin saying, let's 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 annex all of those countries that left us. When you see that going back to to historical things that did not work in the past, your antenna has got to go up. You've got to say to yourself, what in the world are we going back to? Brother Charles. Um, I hope you can hear me. if you can, can you just say yes? Yeah? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm driving and I'm uh, listening to the uh, Bible study. And uh, the thought that I wanted to share is, is anybody who likes Oreo cookies? If I you do. like Oreo cookies, okay, if you like Oreo cookies, it's a sandwich. Yeah. And what is happening right now is there is a mix between the desire for corruption, but it is not being brought out as a full meal. Wow. It is being um, mixed in a little bit with the Oreo cookie sandwich. <laughs> so it's not it, there is a tolerance and there is a desire for truth, but there's also a mix of uh, falsehood. Yeah. And corrupt leaders are now fully embracing and using one George Santos, who has lied through and through. Yeah. So he's just being slipped in there, and my fear is that the tolerance of the lies is going to continue to go on and unless the church, as you were mentioning, uh, stands up and says, okay, this is wrong. It's just being split in until the lying will just be a normal event. Yeah. It's, and, and, and just to push your, um, your illustration, I, I remember as a child when I'd be playing in the backyard and I'd get a rock in my shoe. Now I have an I have the option to take my shoe off and shake the rock out, 
or I could just continue playing with the rock in my shoe. If I don't shake it out, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to in any way injure the shoe. But guess what it injures while I get used to it? It'll start to injure me. I'll start to be infected when I think I'm used to the pain. In reality, it's creating another major pain down the road. So you're absolutely correct. Great illustration. Great thought. A anyone else? What are some things that stuck out to you? I guess one thing that 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 amazed me is verse 30, where it talks about well, 29. It says, at the appointed time. He will invade the South again, but this time the outcome will be different from what it was before. Verse 30, ships of the Western coastlands will oppose him and he will lose heart. Then he will turn back to vent his fury against the Holy Covenant. He will return and show favor to those who forsake the Holy Covenant. Ships are introduced, so that lets you know that commerce is going on coastlands are a valuable uh, 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 asset to those who are interested in trade. Because when you trade with other countries, that means you're exchanging what you create for, and, and, and you sell it off for either uh, uh, monetary or you sell it off for other products or goods that other countries have. When that is corrupt, what ends up happening is you're selling off stuff either at a greater value than what it is, and you're swindling profits. It even got to the point in the narrative where it talked about uh, one of the kings rose up and started to uh, introduce taxes two individuals during that particular time. Now, what one thing I want to let you know is tax taxes were not as common then as it is now. More often than not, taxes were utilized then as a method of not only control, but to keep those that are on the margins of life in poverty. Because that tax base during that particular time was a flat tax sister evelyn okay i see you mentioned the covenant i know that's a uh, agreement between two people right or two nations so that was was that the same covenant we talked about in the past you know was that the covenant between the north and the south kings was that the same well, covenant we talked well, about? i i think i think the definition poured into well let, let's read it again it, and you're talking about the b clause of verse 30 it says, he will then turn back to vent his fury against the Holy Covenant. He will return and show favor to those who forsake the Holy Covenant. That right there is talking about the leader's vengeance against those who adhered to the holy tenets of, or, or the non-negotiables or the uh, uh, tenets of what they believe in terms of the holy covenant between god and and abraham that he said generations would benefit from what the king is doing here is he is venting his frustration not only against the holy covenant but against those who lived by it he also showed favor listen now to those who turned their back on what they initially believe so you get a reward if you turned your back on god that's what that text is saying you will get rewarded by these corrupt kings if you denounce and you pledge your allegiance to those kings and 
we we saw that in the last six to eight years. Deacon Phoenix, you you were about to unmute yourself, but you uh, muted. Did you have something you wanted to share? I, I was just going to say, Pastor, that the Holy Covenant. I was thinking about the covenant made between God and uh, the Israel. Yeah. Uh, which which uh, is also uh, you could refer to as the Holy Covenant, also the one that you said between God and Abraham. Right. Right. That generations afterwards benefited greatly from. Yep. Yep. All right. Anything else? Great, great observation, uh, Sister Evelyn. And thanks for uh, making sure we brought clarity to that. So, so, so let, let, let's let's sum it up. The very last verse says he will pitch his royal tents between the seas at the beautiful holy mountain. Yet he will come to his end and no one will help him. How'd that hit you? <laughs> he will ride out in the sunset thinking he's won, but in reality, his winning in his, his eyes, in his mind, is his end. And all the help he got from those nations and commanders that fought for him will not come to his aid. Now, Sandy, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna shout you out again. <laughs> what is this apocalyptic referring to? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to guess about this. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's so many answers we can use. I don't know. Let's let's pick somebody else. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I thought this was low hanging fruit, Sandy, but let me go to it, your it, dad. It is. I, I know he knows the answer. <laughs> <laughs> what is, who is, what is this? prophetic instance referring to Deacon R.T.? Uh, I think we're referring to Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. he, he made one, but they, cheat, but they took it. They cheated. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's, that's what happened with this king here. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Evelyn? I think the people who didn't go to help him, they found, they finally saw the light. They didn't understand or believe what this king was doing, so they decided to stand back like a kitten mouse game. Yeah, yeah. What ultimately will happen to the accuser? What ultimately will happen to the deceiver? What ultimately will happen to the devil? And I, I'm sorry, in our uh, study of Revelation, mm -hmm. it said that. He has uh, dominion over the earth uh, for three and a half years, 36 or 39 months. And then he will be put in that place that uh, God uh, destined for him from the very beginning. Yeah. So and that place is called hell. And so, again, this is where he's going to end up, you know, after he has his uh, short uh dominion over the earth again for and i think that uh, this is what i don't know if this is referring to this particular instance but eventually after in revelation when we studied it after those 36 months or 39 months three and a half years uh he will be uh put in that place that that was uh constructed for him from the very beginning and that place is hell yeah he will come to an end and no one will help him there will be no opportunity for grace for mercy for forgiveness for atonement <laughs> no more that's the low-hanging fruit i was talking about saying <laughs> i threw your softball all right thanks <laughs> All right, anything else? Anything else before we close? Great, great lesson on today. Um, I think I think it was a lot into it. Uh, it like uh, Sister Evelyn said, it, it could have been overwhelming because it was just so lengthy. But I think there was a repetitive tone to it as well. 
there's an ebb and flow as you relate to uh, the interaction between the North and the South Kings. Uh, ultimately, uh, their demise came to an end. Uh, like I stated earlier in the infancy of this conversation, more often than not, there was an implode because of a, um, a, a renegade that probably rules to power within that. But all that caused is an internal battle and a, uh, a, a further uh, uh, disintegration of these nations. What, whatever ploy they used to try to one up the other, uh, there was no allegiance in that. You know, uh, like we talked about, uh, you know, things were used as a pawn. Um, nations that followed them to this level of destruction did not gain any benefit benefit to it. Uh, the church uh, stood its ground. Uh, there's instances where there were people uh, that did not uh, bow down, did not uh, um, subjugate uh, their uh, relationship to the Holy Covenant. They were killed and or destroyed, um, but yet ultimately, regardless of who won, uh, the, the prize you know, was the ultimate end. And we saw that in the very last uh, verse of, of chapter 11. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Next week, uh, we are in the final chapter of Daniel. So, uh, it's not that long of a chapter, so we'll, we'll be able to knock that out next week. Thankful so much for all of you to, uh, who have connected with us on today. We pray that this lesson blessed you. Um, let your friends and family know that all of our lessons are uploaded on YouTube, and so they can catch up uh, from chapter 1 all the way up and including chapter 11 and then 12. If there's nothing else, uh, all hearts and minds clear so that we can close out with prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, but most of all, what our heart has felt. And we thank you, God, for uh, this enlightenment discussion. Uh, Lord, we are just uh, ever grateful for uh, the unction of your Holy Spirit, uh, which taught us to first navigate in the book of Revelation so that when we uh, dissect this book, uh, things will come to our remembrance and it will be an easier journey. Lord, we are grateful for the participants who connected with us on today, as well as those who may connect with us at a later time. Thank you, Lord, for the guidance and protection of your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name, we do pray. Everyone, unmute yourselves and say amen. 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 Great lesson, everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Man, great lesson, everybody. Y'all be safe out there. Have a good night. Do the same. All right. Thank you. Everything that's going on. Yes, yes. How people still use people to try to.